Shadowrun's character build process is explained in the 5th edition core rulebook, but there's a lot to filter out because there are so many possibilities. This video describes a linear build process for a Shadowrun adept and is designed to help new players. Note that this video is for Shadowrun 5th edition, even though at the time of the recording, 6th edition has been out for a few years. I haven't switched to 6th edition, I don't intend to, so this is for 5th edition. The build process I describe in this video is intentionally restrictive. This video isn't meant to explain every minute detail about Shadowrun character creation, and it's not meant to open every possibility or build an optimized character. It's meant to get you through character creation and ready for your first game. Adept. Shadowrun is a skill-based system. Your character's attributes determine whether you use magic and how you use it, which in turn influences what skills you take during your character build process. Magic can be used in different ways in the Shadowrun setting. A magician uses magic to cast spells and summon spirits. An adept uses magic to boost their own abilities. A mystic adept is an adept who also has the ability to cast spells like a magician. This video demonstrates how to build an adept, not a mystic adept. Once you understand how to build an adept and a magician, you can build a mystic adept yourself. I've done a separate video on building a magic user. Check that out when you're ready. Step 1. Pick a metatype or species. Your metatype in Shadowrun is your species. Pick a metatype from the metatype attribute table on page 66. On your character sheet, add the low number before the slash to its corresponding attribute. There are eight attributes. Body, agility, reaction, strength, willpower, logic, intuition, charisma. There are also two special attributes listed in the table, edge and essence. You can ignore the INI column. For now, just leave the initiative box on your character sheet blank. Step 2. Boost your special attributes. Turn to the priority table on page 65. This table is tricky at first, but it makes sense after you've used it a few times. The priority table is a sliding scale for your character traits. For each column, you choose one and only one cell from rows A to E. If you wanted it to be wealthy, then you'd choose row A for the column labeled resources. But that means you can't use row A for any other column. A different example. Maybe you don't care about material wealth, but you want to have lots of skills. In that case, you'd choose row A for column skills, and row B, or C, or D, or E, for resources. By the end of the process, you'll have chosen exactly one cell from each row for each column, but never the same row twice. To keep things simple for your first build, I recommend choosing cells that give you the least choice. This means you have less to choose during the character build, and I want to emphasize the importance of getting through this character build. You want to get your character built so you can start playing. You'll be able to acquire new skills as you continue to play, so it's not a bad thing to start with just a couple of skills while you're getting used to the game system. Step 2. Again, or still, boost your special attributes. For the metatype column on the priorities table of page 65, choose row A. This column grants your metatype a number of special attribute points. It's the number in parentheses after the metatype. Use these points on your character sheet to boost these values. Edge. Think of it as luck. A maximum of 6, unless you're human, which has a maximum of 7. Use most of your special attribute budget here. Magic and Resonance. This is how magical you are. There's a maximum of 6, and you're going to get a boost to its maximum later in this build, so don't spend anything on this. Step 3. Boost your physical and mental attributes. For the Attributes column on page 65, choose row D, as in Delta. This grants you 14 points to spend on your physical, that's your body, agility, reaction, and strength, and mental, that's willpower, logic, intuition, and charisma, attributes found in the Attributes section of your character sheet. No attribute score may exceed its maximum, the number after the slash in the metatype attribute, table on page 66, and only one may meet its maximum. Step 4. 
choose your magic resonance rating. For the magic or resonance column, choose B, as in beta. Your magic user type grants you a magic rating of 6. Write that in your magic resonance score on your character sheet. The maximum is 6. This also grants you an active skill of rating 4, which you'll choose next. Step 5, skills. For the skills column, choose E, as in echo. This gives you 18 points to spend on skills. But remember, you also get that active skill of rating 4 for choosing row B in the magic and resonance column. Each skill at rating 1 costs 1 point. After you have a skill, each point spent on that skill raises its rating by 1. If you spend 3 points on unarmed combat, then you have unarmed combat 3. If a skill has a specialization listing, then you can spend another point to gain plus 2 dice for your skill tests that involve your specialty. For example, the free fall skill costs 1 point to add to your character's skills section. Were you to take that skill, you'd write free fall 1 on your character sheet to indicate that you have the free fall skill at rating 1. You might append another point though to specialize in base jumping. In that case, you write free fall base jumping 1 plus 2 on your character sheet. This means that when you use your free fall skill, you add one die because it's a rating one skill and two more die when you're specifically base jumping. Page 130 to 147 contains active skills. Pages 147 to 151 contain knowledge skills. The only magical skill you can take as an adept is a sensing intuition from page 142, which allows you to sense and understand the astral plane. You can think of it as a detect magic spell in Dungeons and Dragons if you've played that. Do not take resonance skills. Those are just for technomancers. Write your skills and their ratings in the skills section of your character sheet. Step six, adept powers. As an adept, you get adept power points to spend on special magical abilities that enable you to do things that are otherwise physically impossible, like running on walls, rapid healing, catching bullets, and other things like that. You get a number of power points equal to your magic attribute. In this build, you chose row B for the magic and resonance column, so your magic attribute is 6. Turn to page 308 and spend 6 power points on adept powers. Many adept powers cost fractions of points, so 0 0.25, 0 0.5, and so on. So you can get more than six powers, or you can really maximize a few specific powers. It's up to you. Step seven, resources. For the resources column, choose C, as in Charlie. This gives you 140,000 new yen. That's money. It sounds like a lot, but it goes fast. The gear checklist sidebar on page 94 can help you focus on what's essential. But if you happen to have the Run Faster source book, shopping is even easier. Run Faster has pre-made packs of gear on page 228, but assuming you're just using the core rulebook, here's a basic Shadowrunner pack costing 20,000 new yen. You want a fake sin, that's rating 1, page 443. Metalink comlink, page 439. Colt America Light 36 or L36 light pistol with two spare clips. It's on page 426. 100 rounds of ammo, page 433. A knife, page 423. Armor clothing or a vest, page 436. Glasses with image link, page 444. Mapsoft for the city that you're running the camp you're playing the campaign in, page 442. Standard cred stick, page 443. A flashlight, 449. A respirator, rating 1, page 449. And a backpack. That leaves 120,000 new yen to spend on these important additions. Dock wagon contract from page 450, that will save your life, and a lifestyle, that's on page 95. 
Spend every last new yen you have because you can't take any into the game. The new yen you start with in the game is derived from your lifestyle. So you spend money now on your lifestyle and then you roll the die listed by that lifestyle to find out how much new yen you get for in-game pocket money. Step 8. Spend karma and get contacts. In Shadowrun you don't earn experience points, you earn karma. At character creation you start with 25 karma to spend. Turn to page 73 and look to the positive qualities and negative qualities tables. Positive qualities cost karma points and grant you some in-game benefit. Negative qualities give you karma points back, but they impose some kind of in-game penalty. This is my favorite part of the Shadowrun build. Read over the qualities, choose some positive and negative qualities for your character. You can only have 25 points worth of positive qualities and 25 points worth of negative. So don't feel like you have to hit zero karma. There's other things to spend karma on later. Turn to page 98 to learn what you can do with any leftover karma points, but one of the best things to do is to get contacts. A shadow runner thrives on contact. Shadowrun contacts drive the story. They fill in the gaps that your party doesn't have, and sometimes they even provide or serve as non-player party members. If you have any leftover karma, absolutely get at least one contact. In case you need help coming up with a contact, there are sample ones on page 390, but you can also work with your game master to see who you might know. The additional purchases and restrictions table on page 98 provides six different ways you can spend excess karma, along with associated restrictions. In the game, karma points are what allow you to improve skill ratings, and you can keep up to seven points to carry into the game to get a little bit of a head start if you want. Step 9. Initiative and Limits Time for some final calculations. Turn to page 101, use the final calculations table to determine the value for the empty fields remaining on your character sheet. If you purchased a comm link, then your data processing score is the rating of your comm link. If you didn't get a comm link, you can ignore the matrix values altogether. You should also ignore the living persona section. That's just for Technomancers. There's a separate video on Technomancers. You have a character now, Shadowrun 5th Edition. Yeah, it's a complex system. This character build is intentionally limiting. You might not understand everything on your character sheet yet, but playing the game is the best way to learn. So take your adept, keep in mind that you have special adept powers, write everything on your character sheet somewhere, and go play. Use all the abilities, learn the system, and then come back for more. See you in the shadows, chummer.